Welcome everybody to this Microsoft 365 feature demo. So, and my name is Jesse Ivanen. I'm a principal product manager for Microsoft. And in this video series, we can always kind of look on some new capabilities which we're rolling out in SharePoint on Microsoft 365 for all arm. Uh, with me today is Sean Squires, and, and we're going to talk about some cool, great features in the uh, knowledge agent. But Sean, let's start with a who you are and what is your background. So. Um, where are you based on and what's your role? <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Mason. I, yeah, my name is Sean Squires. I am a principal product manager in the OneDrive SharePoint team at Microsoft. I have been here a very long time, over 20 years, uh, working on uh, SharePoint and, frankly, building uh, productivity and content management solutions. And so yep. thrilled to be here today. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the cool thing about your background, actually, as well, not that we're going to deep dive on the background, is that you, you understand the importance of metadata and structure data and information architecture, which is kind of the topic of today, isn't it? So right. Right. yes. What, what is now, what is the knowledge agent, and how does that relate on the metadata? Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm excited and thrilled that I get to continue working on something that's so near and dear and important. Uh, is metadata on the digital assets that folks store in SharePoint. For those of you who've worked in SharePoint for a long time, you're going all the way back to things like the content by query web part and setting up content types and things like the site columns. Metadata is important because it's information about the document or from the document that can help uh, improve search, drive uh, governance, and even workflow process. And so yep. getting making it easier, because a lot of us don't like to manually put metadata on documents, uh, has always been an objective that we've been working towards. And now in this agentic world, as we bring more AI-powered capabilities into SharePoint, we make it easier than ever. So what the knowledge agent does is it uh, really facilitates the creation and generation of that metadata, and then being able to use that metadata to do all those uh, business processes, things I just mentioned. Yeah. we we. we... We do actually have another video with Judith on the knowledge agents as well, but that's another part of the knowledge agents. So the knowledge agents is a kind of an overarching agentic experience in SharePoint, right? And then the, the metadata is part of that functionality. That's, that's right. Yeah, the knowledge agent, you know, we don't really say it's a new feature. It's more of an, an enabler, of uh, an intelligent curator that brings a, uh, AI capabilities into SharePoint to facilitate everything from the uh, creation of site assets, the creation of content, the management of content, and frankly, just making it easier to use those assets that you're storing in SharePoint. And so the piece that I'm going to talk about today is specifically how do we help you organize your content in document libraries? Cool. Really, really cool. And, and that's a, such a classic challenge, having you know, thousands of files, as you know, Sean, for sure, thousands of files and then manipulating them and setting the metadata. And it's so time consuming. Uh, but let's actually jump on the live demo so we can see how the knowledge agent is making everybody's life easier uh, as part of the, the document management. So let me flip the mode a bit here and Sean is going to take away from here. All right. Thanks, Vesa. So yeah, so to, to illustrate, uh, how the knowledge agent can help you organize your library. I have a library here of, imagine we're collecting resumes for a new uh, job requisition. And in this case, I have some metadata. I have like a job ID and maybe even an applicant location, but otherwise there's not much metadata. And you all know that when you often create a library, a blank library literally has no metadata at all. Yep. You can manually go and create it and configure those columns. And if you have site columns or content types, you can add that stuff. But again, you still have to manually put a lot of that metadata in. So we've been introducing features like through syntax models and things like this to make it a little bit easier. But now with the knowledge agent, it's even easier. So we have this uh, floating action button over here that's available for contextual skills that are available to you depending on where you are. So if you caught Judith's video, when you're on other parts of the site, you might have site manager capabilities. But when you're in a doc library, you have document library capabilities. And so you'll see that there's three here, organize this library, set up rules, and create new view. If I go ahead and or, uh, open up organize this library, you'll see that I'm bringing in sort of an interface here that is bringing in uh, a set of the files. And then what it's doing is it can start looking over these documents and reasoning and with the purpose of understanding what these documents are, that they're resumes, and then it can actually start making suggestions for metadata that you can capture from these documents. 
Uh, you'll also notice here that I've got like a, a chat experience over here, a chat panel with some starter prompts that can also help you, uh, you know, engage with the agent to do very specific tasks, like creating columns like we're doing here, or some of those other actions that might be uh, important for configuring a library. So you'll see here that what the agent's done on these resumes, it has not only uh, suggested three columns, compensation, highest degree, certifications list, but it's also run, it's, it's built prompts on each of these suggested columns and then actually process the first 20 files here. So you can see what the output is. This is helpful because then you can understand just what the agent is uh, suggesting and what it's, uh, what it's, um, uh, what the prompt is, you can go ahead and edit the column and actually see that it's uh, suggested an LLM prompt here. And if I if I like these, I can keep them as is, or I can adjust them. I can also- I, I have to, so yeah. it's just to be so clear, this is not yet applied. So we are kind of in a preview mode, right? So we're still kind of, a, we're playing around with the data and the settings. It's not yet adding those to the document library. So That's it's not correct. adding it yet. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Think of it as like you're in like sort of a sandbox. You're playing with yeah. actual content in your library, but we aren't going to commit the changes until you, the human, have had a chance uh, to look them over and decide, yeah. is it what you need and is it everything you need? Maybe something yep. here, I might also say, wow, okay, I like what you suggested. Maybe I want to keep these. Maybe I don't really care about the highest degree earned, so let's just go ahead and remove that. I yep. also might want to say, you know what? All these resume files have these like very generic names. Maybe I want to say something like uh, create a column uh, for um, a candidate name. And so I can even say what I want it to be called, something like that. And now yep. the agent is going to go, oh, that's great. You want to create a column called candidate name. So it will not only go and create that column for me, again, not, uh, not saving it yet, but you'll see that it creates the column, suggests a prompt that will extract that information, and then it'll run it again against those files. And so you can start to see like, wow, I can play in this sort of laboratory and kind of configure the library as I need it. And so yeah. what's great about this is, again, I have all this uh, uh, interactivity. We'll go ahead and stop that for a second just so you can kind of see uh, what the screen has done. It's filled out most of these things. You can let it continue yep. processing. The whole idea of this is to really help you test what's there. Um, and you'll see I have these cards here that also will provide some more information. They do the same thing as if I'm interacting with the columns on the canvas. Yep. All right, the other thing I can do, you can do all those things that are from the fab in the, I'm sorry, from the, that floating action menu where I got into this experience. I don't have to go back out and then go back in to say, do a, uh, a view or a rule. I could go ahead and say, uh, maybe I want to say something like uh, um, show all uh, candidates uh, with um, CISSP certification. So I love the natural language way of actually dealing with this stuff. So you don't have to right. click through and manipulate and do things. You just ask it to do things, and all of a sudden, SharePoint does it for you. So and beautiful. SharePoint does it for you. And what's great about this space, I'm so glad you said that, because look, check this out. I didn't say create a view for me that filters yep. the results set by you know, certification list equals. Like I didn't have to write a SQL statement. I literally yep. just had to say in natural language, I need a filtered view of what you have uh, suggested here. And you'll see here that the card it's created is a view. So now yep. if I like what's happening here and I'm, I'm good with these, uh, these suggestions here, I can go ahead and say, great, now let's go and apply these changes. And then as Vesa mentioned earlier, as you mentioned earlier, uh, now I will save these things to my library. Yep. And so I can save them to the current view or even a new view. And so the yep. idea here is that even though right now it looks like it's a view, it doesn't have to be its own. I can just go ahead and add it to the current view. And then what we're Pretty doing cool. at this point is now we're going to close out this sort of preview experience, bring you back to the library and commit those changes so that you can see your updated library. Really, really cool. And and of course, all of the columns which you're now creating, you can still go and get rid of them. That doesn't change the actual source data. It's just how do we access and what data is being exposed, right? That's right. That's right. And you'll see too, another great thing I want to pull out is that for those of you who are familiar with the autofill feature, the agent is aware of that and will use it. And so when you apply these changes, because a lot of the columns that it's created are effectively LLM powered autofill columns, 
Yes. When I apply these changes, notice that it immediately started running on, in this case, the first 20 files. We'll eventually add more, but currently what it does is it at least takes what you've configured and goes after the first set of uh, files. If you need to do more, you can go ahead and manually select them. In the future, we'll give you even more backfill options on your existing library content. Really cool. So, so let's recap that one. So basically the prompt which you have in the column is then auto automatically executed against the file by the agent and LLM and to collect the information which we are requesting that to actually That's show. Right. That's, That's right. a really cool feature. Yeah. yeah. And what you will notice is uh, that the uh, additions that uh, I just applied to the library, because I added it to the current view, they've actually yes. been added to the all documents view. Yep. One thing I also wanted to show you, though, was we we added columns, we added you know some updates to the current view. But the other thing you can do is you can also even set up rules. And so I could have done that in that previous session. But let's say I've got this thing going, and then I realize, wow, you know, now we're getting a lot more resume submissions. Let's go ahead and actually set up a, a rule that will tell me uh, when a new file gets added. And so you yep. see, I have some starter prompts. I can also again natural language. Uh, request this, but see what it does is it brings up the appropriate rule action for me to confirm. I can even customize it, and then I can go ahead and create that. Again, I get a summary in the chat of what that is. I can go ahead and edit it, and if I'm happy with that new rule, I can go ahead and save those changes. And yep. now I've got that rule, I've got the uh, document, and I've got all of these updates. Pause. Yep. And again, you as a user, you were using natural language. You didn't need it to know which click through and setting and view and configuration option needed to do. You used natural language to explain what did you want the engine to do and the agent to do for you, which is really, really cool. That's right. That's right. And now I want to bring this full circle as well. So one of the things, let's go back to like the sort of state of the library, where remember before I started doing the configuration, I just want to sort of highlight this. You want to be able to use that available metadata, but whether it's metadata that you've put in or is being automatically extracted or generated by the agent. And in this case, notice that I've got these resumes and I've got this one field already along with the job ID of the applicant's location. And notice that they are in various cities around, well, frankly, the world, the United States. I've got one here in Milan. There's in Italy. There's one in the UK. Yep. One of the things that we tie this metadata into is with the ask a question experience. And so if you want to interrogate this large library, perhaps of resumes and look for specific information, you can now use that metadata to filter and yes. refine those results. So check this out. I can go and do something like, uh, you know, show me the candidates that are in Europe. Now, what's interesting about this query is nowhere in the metadata am I saying Europe. I, I'm sorry, do yes. I have an applicant's location as Europe? So the agent is semantically understanding that Europe is referring to a, a region of a lot of countries. And so it's yes. able to understand that Milan and Rome are places. And notice what it did here is we're not only using that semantic meaning to interpret the applic applicant location to filter the results, but look at what it's doing. It's even using that metadata in the response. And so it's yes. grouping my candidates by the country where uh, they are applying from. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, again, the metadata as part of the, the document information, agents are aware of the metadata so that they can give you more accurate responses uh, based on your intent. Which That's is right. That's right. Awesome. awesome. And this is just the beginning. We're going to keep you know building out these capabilities because you're probably wondering, well, what about these other aspects of library configuration? Yes. We want to hear your feedback, but know that we are continuing to evolve and expand this set of agent skills to continue to make it easier for uh, you to configure and optimize the library to enhance your productivity and streamline your uh, business processes. Yeah, and and if I'm not mistaken, we actually have already released multiple versions of the knowledge agent, so we're kind of evolving that all the time. So as as Sean was saying, that this is just the beginning. We're adding more capabilities, more intelligence, more actions, more options, and and more intelligence even on agents and uh, to be able to understand what is happening and the skills what is able to do uh, but we have so much information on the on the list and libraries and, and having this kind of capabilities just awesome really cool yeah
Anything uh, now? I'm going to put you on the spot before we close up. Oh, Anything okay. what you can kind of a tease up uh, on the on the future things? Anything what you can say already at this moment of the time? The metadata was just announced that this is coming uh, or is available in the document libraries. Anything else? What's in the pipeline, or is it still we can't talk about it yet? <laughs> Some of it we can't talk about yet, but I yeah. do. I know that it's a great question. I know everyone's eager to hear. Like, okay, where's this going? What does that roadmap yes. look like? We'll definitely be sharing more uh, at, uh, upcoming events this fall. But one thing I would highlight is, as Vesa just said, we're going to continue to evolve the capabilities and actions here. But one, but also your feedback is invaluable to helping shape and prioritize those uh, yes. investments that we make. And one area that I've gotten great feedback uh, from is making sure that the agent is grounded on what's already available. So what I mean by that is obviously what you saw in my demo here is the agent was creating new columns. And truthfully, they are list columns currently. But we know that the, you, if you've already created like site columns, you might want to reuse those. And so we want to yeah. make sure that the agent is aware of existing columns and can actually suggest them so you don't end up with multiple in column instances of the same thing, but can actually reuse that because that will just make search that much better, especially if you're going beyond a list or library and looking at multiple sources. So that's just... Absolutely. There's one thing we want to make sure that folks understand is we are very well aware of the investments you're making in things like side columns, content types, term sets, things like this. So we want to reassure you that we will be leveraging uh, those investments so that the agent uh, can really be optimized for your environment. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and just to be clear, for those who do not know what is a site column and content type, maybe right. you don't have to even know what is a site column and content type. So, because again, they're, they're pretty technical things, but they come from an information architecture world uh, where we are able to build more consistent uh, metadata. But again, if you have a smaller company, maybe you don't have to do them. Uh, so there's no, multiple yeah. ways of using uh, SharePoint. So from a just using the libraries as they are, and then we create those columns directly in library. Um, but then for enterprise level, maybe we want to have content types, and that's cool to hear that we're taking that into account as well. Absolutely. Great. Thank you for calling that out, basically. Yeah, because it, it really depends on what you need. We know that there's you know, different audiences, different needs, and different levels of uh, you know, content management you know, development that's required. And we want to make sure the agent can help you scale up what you need but also yep. just immediately get you started uh, because obviously as I hope you see and we've demonstrated today is just even doing some of these things, adding some metadata to your library automatically uh, and then also adding things like views and rules to leverage that metadata can do so much for helping you better manage that content that you're storing there. And you can continue, the agent will continue to monitor that by the way. So yep. once these things are set up, as you continue to upload content, the agent will process those new items or those edited items. And so the agent is intended to not just be like a one-time uh, collaborator, but an active, intelligent curator and monitor that can help you to better manage your content. Really cool thing to call out. New documents getting in, of course, all of the, the rules and everything else will be applied for them as well. Yes, absolutely. But now, uh, I guess from a timing perspective, Sean, uh, I would love yeah. to continue the discussion uh, with you. It's always a, a pleasure. And there's so much insights and so much uh, knowledge uh, you're able to share uh, on these new features as well. But I guess it's time to wrap up. But okay. um, Thank you, Sean, uh, for showing uh, showing up and, and volunteering on doing the demo. Really valuable stuff, awesome features, awesome capabilities. Uh, I can't wait to future capabilities on this one, but it's already brilliant stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. And thank you all for the time. And do continue to give us feedback. We're eager to hear what you guys do with this these new capabilities, OK? Excellent. Thank you, Sean. Cheers. Right. Thank you. Thank you.